Welcome back everyone. For the past few years now, the Lakers have alternated between putting a big emphasis on either their offense or their defense, but they've really not been able to figure both of them out at the same time. Following them winning a championship during the NBA bubble, they've taken a rather extreme approach to putting their teams together, and it's often led to them becoming one-dimensional. During the 2020-21 NBA season, they were number one in defensive rating, but only 24th in offensive rating, and that led to them going all in on their offense during that offseason, which did not end very well for them. I think we all know what happened during the 2021-22 NBA season. In an effort to improve their offense, they made a trade for dynamic point guard Russell Westbrook, and then they took that a step further by adding offensive-minded guys like Carmelo Anthony, many of which were way beyond their prime at that point. But after that team failed miserably, they then went back to a defensive-minded approach last season, and while it took them until the trade deadline to fully achieve it, that was what they built their team identity around. And don't get me wrong here, I fully agree with them doing that too. They've always done better when building their team around their defense, though it's often led to them putting too big of a burden on LeBron and Anthony Davis offensively. And we've watched that burden contribute to their downfall at times too. Whether or not it's directly led to them getting injured, it's likely played a factor in it. But even looking beyond that, it's made their offense way too simplistic, largely being isolation dependent on those two alone. Although I think that could finally be coming to an end. They've seemed to have built their team around their defense, while at the same time not forgetting about their offense. In my opinion, they took a great step in the right direction during their run to the conference finals, and I think it showed what they could become with a slightly better fitting team along with more team continuity, which I do believe they were able to accomplish. Now I know they have not completely finished putting their team together quite yet, but even with the way it is right now, I think they are able to improve it from an all around standpoint, and in today's video, we are going to talk about why that could make them a two headed monster during the upcoming year. Without further ado though, let's dive right into it. And I think the first thing we should talk about are LeBron and Anthony Davis themselves. Like I referred to before, their offense has been extremely dependent on them throughout their Lakers tenure, and especially during the Frank Vogel era, where their offense felt like it was purely isolation dependent at times. Now, I'm not trying to throw shade at our guy Frank Vogel here, but he definitely did run a very simplistic offense, though that is no longer the case with Darvin Ham. And even more importantly, he does not rely as heavily on LeBron and Anthony Davis to run it. I mean, any team that has them will obviously revolve their offense around them, but that does not mean you have to make it solely reliant on them, which I really don't believe is the case here. And I think for maybe the first time ever during their Lakers tenure, LeBron and Anthony Davis will routinely be able to take a back seat within their offense. Again, it will obviously be built around them, but I think they'll finally be relying on them a little bit less. And much of that is due to the combination of D'Angelo Russell, Austin Reeves, and Rui Hachimura, who really took a big chunk of the offensive burden off them late last season, even carrying over into the playoffs too. Following the trade deadline, D'Lo and Reeves were huge for them within their offense. They both averaged around 17 points per game, over 5 assists per game, and shot over 40% from the 3 point line each, filling a huge void for them when LeBron hurt his foot. And then when the playoffs came around, Rui Hachimura came out of nowhere to become their X Factor. He provided them with a huge boost off the bench, putting up over 12 points, shooting 55.7% from the field, and then an absolutely ridiculous 48.7% from 3. Believe it or not, but Rui Hachimura is currently the all-time leader in 3-point percentage during the playoffs. I mean, I know the guy has only played in 21 total playoff games so far, but he quite obviously elevates his game during the postseason. And all of that led to the Lakers putting a big priority on retaining those three, which they were able to do during free agency. They brought D'Lo back on a short-term deal, and then locked up both Reeves and Achimura on long-term deals, all of which were fairly team-friendly by the way. But with new contracts will come new expectations. And if they can achieve them, that will completely transform the Lakers offense. LeBron and AD have never had two, let alone three reliable options with them on offense. They really wanted Kyle Kuzma to fill that role for them back in the day, but he was never really able to do it, and largely due to the rather simplistic offense that they are running once again. But I do not believe they will be hindered by that problem anymore. With Darvin Ham implementing a much more modern day offense, that allows their offense to revolve around more than simply LeBron and AD alone. 
And I truly do believe that the combination of D'Lo Reeves and Hachimura can fill that role for them too. Beginning with D'Angelo Russell, they often look better with him running their offense. He is a pick and roll maestro with Anthony Davis, and then he can find open shooters all over the court for them too. Not only that though, but D'Lo can allow LeBron to fill more of an off-ball role for them as well. It's really all about him being willing to fill it. LeBron's a great off-ball cutter when he wants to be, and he will always attract at least some attention while playing off the ball, which helps D'Lo to have more room to operate. And then for Reeves, he can pretty much fill any role they need him to. Whether they want him to fill the role of a playmaker, a shot creator, or even an off-ball shooter, he can really do it all for them. And while I love the fact that he can fill the role of an off-ball player, I think they should give him even more on-ball opportunity this season. I mean, I think the guy proved to be pretty damn efficient, shooting about 53% from the field, 40% from three, and then routinely getting to the free throw line at will. I really don't think you can argue with them giving him more opportunities. He already led their team in scoring a couple of times during the postseason, and helped pick up their offense when LeBron and Anthony Davis could not get anything going. You could really make that argument for Rui Hachimura here too, definitely to a lesser degree compared to Reeves, but I think that Hachimura should be given a larger role within their offense here too. And with LeBron getting older, that should be music to their ears. Even though he can take on a pretty big load offensively yet, they don't want him to have to do that, nor do they want to have to put that burden on Anthony Davis alone either. Again, they have never had this much offensive talent around LeBron and AD, and especially not while having a simultaneously dominant defense. Because even with them having all that offensive talent, I still believe their number one strength will be their defense, which will once again be led by Anthony Davis. I really think they found something here by making him their full-time center on defense. He might not have wanted to do it right away, but he became an absolute game wrecker on defense more often than not. Now, I'm glad they are thinking about certain matchups by trying to add more center depth, but Anthony Davis should be their primary center 99% of the time. I know everyone likes to point out game planning for Nikola Jokic, but you should not alter your entire team for one singular matchup. Again, they are planning for that by having more center depth behind him, but their defense has looked best with AD at the 5, which was then complemented by the pieces around him. They kept around their lockdown wing defender with Jared Vanderbilt, found a replacement for their point of attack defender with Gabe Vincent, went out and got a legitimate 3 and D wing with Torian Prince, and then found a burst-style defensive big man with Jackson Hayes. Then, not to mention that they have a budding young defender in second-year wing Max Christie, who could very well become a reliable 3 and D wing player for them in his own right. I love the fact that they have more room to get better here too. Between Vanderbilt, Reeves, Christie, Hayes, and even Cam Reddish, they are all 25 years old or younger with more room to grow, with that being particularly true on defense. They are obviously built around Anthony Davis on defense, but they are not solely reliant on him, which is what they were during the dreaded 2021-22 NBA season. And then, unlike previous years where they are purely reliant on LeBron and AD offensively, I no longer believe that is the case with them here. They have put together a very well-rounded team, and one that I believe could be their best since the NBA bubble. To wrap everything up here though, I believe the Lakers could very well have both a top 5 defense and top 10 offense this season, which is something they have not come close to in quite some time now. With all of that in mind though, what do you guys think? How do you feel about the team the Lakers have put together? And do you agree with the points that I made throughout this video? Comment your thoughts down below. That will do it for this video though. Big thank you to those of you who took the time to watch until the end of this video, and until the end of all of my videos in general. I really hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, be sure to drop a like on the video, subscribe to the channel if you have not already, and turn on notifications to get notified right away when I drop a new video. But as always, thank you for watching and have a great day.